Alright guys, a fun little project today. If you've seen my last video, uh, we compared this cheap lithium battery from eBay to a new AGM, <clears throat> also from eBay. Uh, this battery turned out pretty good for the price I paid. Now I did check the prices and I got it wrong in the last video. It was actually this lithium battery was $309 delivered and the AGM was $339 delivered. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, a $30 difference and this one come out in front in every way. Um, as you can see I've pulled it apart here and on the first two tests, the 10 and the 15 amp test, um, we came in above the 100 amp hours just and on the 25 amp discharge test we came in a couple of amp hours, I think it was 98.8 or something like that um, just under 100 amp hours anyway so in all the tests it was twice as much as the AGM of course because the AGM should only pull down 50% of its capacity so 309 I know some guys were asking for the link these batteries so I will post it in the description of this video um, you can go back and watch the previous video if you didn't see it I bought this battery not for the intention of using it as a um, 12 volt lithium battery because um, in my business we have our own lithium batteries so I just use one of my own brand should I need a lithium battery I bought this one because it had the cylindrical cells um, of course being a LiPo 4 battery each one of these cells is 3.2 volts not the 3.7 that we get with lithium ion cells like the 18650 what I'm going to do with this battery is convert it into um, a 48 volt pack for my electric trike um, it's going to end up being about 54.7 um, nominal but uh, about 59 fully charged so the capacitors in our speed controller should be 63 caps we should be okay so this is as I pulled it out of the battery um, of course has the other retainer on top and we had one row missing which was the one row we needed to make up our 48 volt pack uh, all these connector strips uh, all came off fairly easy so three spot welds by the look of it uh, if they are spot welds now the thing with these cells is the top is copper so I am not sure how well our zinc strips are going to spot weld to copper but we need 8 cells in series uh, sorry 16 cells in series and at the moment we are only going to have 2 lots of 14 cells in series so we needed an extra 4 cells so it just so happened that um, another battery a customer bought in that he bought off eBay the BMS failed in it and um, he rang up the guy that he bought it from we've done a video showing no voltage across the terminals the guy refunded him his money and told him to keep the battery so he told me to keep the battery I gave him a $20 discount on a new decent lithium ion battery because these are cheaper ones and they've only got a small 50 amp BMS in them just so happens that inside that battery when I cut it open was the uh, same lipo cells almost so the reason this one done so well uh, is because it's got 16 amp hour cells in it each cell is marked with a capacity uh, so we've got 16.35 here 16.44 there uh, I doubt very much whether they would have balanced them all out so the only problem we got is these are 15 amp hour cells so our pack is only going to end up being as good as its weak battery 
uh, which is 15 amps. So uh, we're going to have, uh, once we series connect all of these, two banks at 15 amp hours will be paralleled. That'll give us 30 amp hours total capacity. Uh, when using in the bike, we're probably going to get 25 amp hours. So we're going to be making a 25 amp hour pack out of a 100 amp hour 12 volt LiPo battery. So thankfully the cells were the same in the other battery. Um, all the batteries that, are used, that use cylindrical cells, the LiPo 4s, will have cells like this. And the lithium ion ones normally have the 18650s or the uh, 27600s, something like that. So we've solved that problem. We have our extra cells here. And then we come up with problem B, spot welding the zinc strips across to do all our connections. So as you can see, my spot welder, I think you can see my spot welder, yes, here. Um, you put the pack under here, push up on the uh, two electrodes and that activates the switch. We also have a foot pedal for it. However, we are not going to be able to get to the second row um, of this pack because it is too wide. For this here machine and we'll have a look at that now so as you can see it is not going to reach our second pack to do our spot welds so to alleviate that problem <coughs> I hope I made up these two leads which are going to screw to here on each side and um, they're going to be my spot welding leads. Hopefully it'll work and I've never tried to spot weld zinc onto copper yet so I don't even know if it's going to work right from the get-go. But that's the plan so I'm going to go ahead and I'll get set up and we'll come back and have a look and we'll see how the zinc strip spot welds to the batteries and we'll see if my extension lead idea is actually going to work okay so we're going to give it a try see what happens and i don't like rehearsing videos so i like to do it as it's happening so um in the event of a failure you get to all see it and there's always plenty of failures so here we go First little test spot weld. We'll see what happens. We'll do it fairly close. And I don't think we're having a win here. No. No, not, not enough current for some reason. And that is up flat out, I believe. Not so good. Now we're in a bit of trouble. We are, we are. We may have to revert to soldering. Um, now the last battery I pulled apart, they were all soldered together. Um, but I did my best to clean them all up in the hope that our spot welding was going to work. Our spot welding is clearly not going to work. And I assume we are not getting enough current through these leads. Ah dear. So it looks like we are going to solder. Unfortunately. Which is a pain in the bum. But we've got to do what we've got to do. So there you go. That's why I do things live, not rehearsed. Uh, we get to see the failures, but uh, this is a very big piece of um, copper, so 
probably more than this machine can do. It's really designed just for the 18650s and it works quite fine for that. But for this, absolutely useless. So, um, pack all our welding machine back up after I put it back together the way it was. Get the big soldering iron out, soldering iron out, and uh, we'll go ahead with the soldering. All right, not sure how everybody else does their soldering of lithium batteries, which you shouldn't do, but we're going to. Um, so I've just got a little strip there sitting on a bit of wood. Might have to sort this cord out. And then I just tin each end. Like so. And then I'll tin both the battery terminals. Like so. And then when this cools down. Simply put that on top and we heat it up until it gets nice and hot. You can see the solar running out the side. A bit of solder on there helps to get it hot. Like so. And that is our strip stuck on there nicely. So I've done these two, so all these batteries here have to be in series. All these batteries here have to be in series, and then we parallel this bank with this bank. So I have to be careful with these last lot of batteries I put in. All the ones that were in the original battery. Uh, where the valve is, that blue ring is a valve, uh, they're all on the negative side and the white caps are the positive side. But on these ones, they're black caps all over. So I have to make sure that um, I have the polarity correct in regards to the valves which show the negative side. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder all these up and uh, We'll come back and have a look at the end result. Okay, so we've got um, one side of our battery all hooked in series. We're going to turn it over and do the other side now. So on the other side we need to hook them two in series. So I'm just going to put a black mark there. And then I do every second lot or miss a gap on the other side. So when we're doing the other side, it's where you don't want to make a mistake otherwise you're going to get smoke and where did my marks go? over there ok so we're going to start from here those two together, those two together those two together and then these two get bridged across that way and then so on through that series so that's one bank that's another bank and then we parallel the two banks. Um, some of you might be saying awfully big batteries for such small ribbon. So that's 30 amp ribbon. Um, our motor is a thousand watts max. So max current draw is going to be 20 amps and that'll be shared between the two parallel banks. So 10 amps each. So in reality the ribbon is three times it's capable of carrying three times the current we're going to be drawing through it. So um, should be okay. Alright, I'll go ahead and do this side and then we'll come back and if there's no smoke hopefully the voltages on both banks are going to be the same. Okay, that's us done. Um, so we have positive and negative of one bank, positive and negative of the other. So we're simply going to check this one and this one, make sure we have the correct voltage. Using our U-Butte multimeter up there. Okay, so first bank. Oh, bad earth connection. Did 
53.3 why is this one not steady 53.3 okay so we're good so um, what we're going to do now is parallel these two banks so positive to positive negative to negative um, find some good silicon wire to do that and we're also going to put our lead on there in this case it's going to be an Anderson plug um, they're just what I like to use and easy to disconnect the battery no BMS yet um, but this is a fully charged pack at the moment so we'll be able to put it in the bike and test it uh, we won't glue the lid on the box until such time as we've got the BMS in there a couple of screws just to hold it together for the time being and um, then we're probably ready to go for a bit of a test ride to see how this battery performs Okay, so our um, battery is ready to go back in the case. I've just got a bit of tape around that eyelet so it doesn't short out on nothing. But as I was doing it, I did short it out a bit there. Uh, that's actually put a hole straight through that strip, so I'm going to have to dob a bit of solder on there. Um, and the other eyelet up this end, and that to bolt back up into our lid here. And now I've got to straighten out all this mangled up plastic so uh, it'll go back on the box the box is also mangled because we decided to use the heat gun and try and get it apart I and mean, I should have just cut it but um, we'll be able to get it straight again with the heat gun and um, a special pair of pliers so now I'm going to go ahead straighten the boxes back up the box and the lid Sit our battery in there, a bit of glue on the bottom to hold it. I won't put much because I've got to get back out later. Um, actually, I might just sit it in there, pack it with foam, and uh, screw the lid back on for our test journey. Uh, that'll be next video. We'll give it a run and uh, see if I can uh, find my head strap and we'll chuck the GoPro on my head and go for a bit of a ride. So that's it, the battery is made, uh, we have about 25 amp hours at um, a nominal voltage of um, 51.6 or something I think it works out to be and that should be pretty good for our 48 volt system and hopefully we should get about 100 k's out of it without any pedalling but um, after we've done this we're going to make up a regen circuit um, simply a plug and play circuit and see how that goes adding some energy back into our battery alright guys thanks for watching and we'll see you next video